Welcome to Raw Online. Today we will discuss about the internal feature of medulla at the level of pyramidal decussation. So competency for today's topic will be describe the transverse section of medulla oblongata at the level of pyramidal decussation. So here you can see the image of medulla oblongata and I told to study the internal feature, we have to make a transverse section at different levels. So here we are going to make a section at this level. So that level will be the purple color structure what you see is the pyramidal decussation. So we are going to make a transverse section here and going to see the features. So this level section will be more or less similar to the spinal cord section because the spinal cord just continues with the medulla okay and how we are going to study the transverse section by discussing the what are the changes occurring in the gray matter and central canal and what are the changes going to occur in the white matter okay now here you can see the picture of spinal cord this is the transverse section of spinal cord and this is the transverse section of the medulla at the level of pyramidal decussation. So this section already you have studied the transverse section of spinal cord you have already have studied. So what all the things you here you can see the central canal of the spinal cord and surrounding gray matter. The gray matter will be having the ventral horn or anterior gray column dorsal horn or posterior gray column okay this is the gray matter of spinal cord but here in the pyramidal decussation see the gray matter it is not like in the spinal cord but it do have the central canal but the surrounding gray matter is not in the shape of butterfly the dorsal horn especially will have three projections instead of single projection here you can see three projection on either side and if you see the anterior gray column it is also detached by some fibers decussating fibers okay this is the main difference you should understand here what is the changes in the gray matter then coming to the white matter you see the tracts in the white matter we all know the white matter is due to the presence of the nerve fibers. So, the nerve fibers will be passing through the spinal cord and the brain stem in the form of bundles. So, those, those are the tracts. Okay. So, here you can see some tracts and here you can see tracts in two color that shows the uh, descending tracts in one side and ascending tracts in one side. Okay. And here the important feature in white matter you should see here is this decussation and this decussation is the pyramidal decussation. So just remember this image we are going to study what are the difference we are having in this pyramidal decussation. Okay? We will discuss one by one. Now first we are going to discuss the changes in the gray matter. So here you can see the central canal that means this section is at the level of closed part of medulla. Okay. So, surrounding the central canal, we see the gray matter of the medulla. So, this gray matter will be having anterior horn and the posterior horn of the gray matter. Now, if you see the anterior horn, this is the anterior horn or anterior gray column. It is divided into two parts by the decussating pyramidal fibers. So, this region is the pyramid. I told pyramid elevation will contain the corticospinal fibers mainly. So, this corticospinal fibers is going to cross the anterior median fissure and going to reach the lateral aspect. So, from here it will be descending as a lateral corticospinal tract. Okay. And some fibers will not cross and those fibers will be descending here as an anterior corticospinal tract. We will discuss that in a separate slide. Here you should understand this pyramidal fibers are decussating. So, because of this decussation what happens this anterior gray horn 
is detached. Part of anterior grey horn is detached and that detached part is known as supraspinal nucleus. So, remember what is supraspinal nucleus? It is nothing but the detached part of anterior grey horn. So, this supraspinal nucleus will contain two type of neurons, one ventral neuron and lateral neuron. So, this ventral neuron, here we will have the ventral neuron and here we will have the lateral neuron. So, this ventral neuron will be giving origin to the ventral root of first spinal nerve, that is first cervical spinal nerve. So, that is the ventral neuron. This lateral neuron, this will give fibers for the spinal accessory nerve. We know the 11th cranial nerve is known as spinal accessory nerve, which will have a cranial part and spinal part. Okay. So, the spinal part of the 11th cranial nerve will be taking origin from the spinal nucleus. Okay. So, this spinal nucleus above from this level, Upwards, it continues with nucleus ambiguous, which will give fibers to some cranial nerve. Okay, remember that. So, the supraspinal nucleus will contain two type of neurons, the ventral neurons and lateral neuron. Ventral neuron is going to give rise to the ventral root of first cervical spinal nerve. Because this pyramidal decussation is just cranial to the section of spinal cord. So, this neuron is going to give rise to the first cervical spinal nerve, ventral root. The lateral neuron is going to give rise to the spinal part of spinal accessory nerve. 